So this is this is a little bit different uh, of a kind of question, and you, you sort of talked about it a bit. But uh, here's okay. a comment from Dave Flumbaum, uh, who who works at Disclosure. Kenny, I lived in Shanghai a decade ago, and I had no idea how huge you are there. Uh, I read a few months ago that you got in trouble with the CPC for tweeting a selfie of the Hong Kong protest, and ended up taking the photo down. In hindsight, do you regret taking it down? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, there's there's way more to it than that little surface. Uh, a tweet or whatever is that a tweet we're reading or it's a co it's a comment it's yeah, a comment yeah it's, it, that that is like just like, like a very surface of a whole story that's way deeper and less much less interesting than any of that but here's what happened so I'm just walking around Hong Kong which I, I'm I go there a lot I go to China a lot I've been to China 25 or 30 times in my career I know my music's really popular You're really big in China very big very big and uh, and proud of that. And I, I go and perform there all the time. I perform in mainland China, perform in Hong Kong, Taiwan, I, all over Asia, all the time. So, um, you know, the, the protest side had been on the news. And so I could see it from my hotel room. I thought, I'm just going to go down there and just check it out. Okay, so I leave my hotel room, and now I'm walking on the street. And as I'm walking, everyone's stopping me for pictures. I haven't even made it to the protest site, and I've already taken 30 or 40 pictures, maybe 50. So by the time I get to the protest site, I'm just looking around. Hmm. I took a selfie, uh, and then, but that's not the one that 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 wasn't that didn't get me in any trouble. It was a peace sign, right? Not even that. It was it was what happened was that other people that were around there said, "Hey, can we take a picture with you?" So I take a picture with them, and they turn out to be protesters. They put it up on their site that says Kenny G supporting here supporting the protesters. I'm just walking around. I'm taking pictures with people. You don't, you cannot tell a person is a protester. They're just people walking around, so you don't know anything. I just, I left the area and went to lunch. Let's, next thing I know, people are telling me I'm in trouble. So nothing really happened. So, I mean, and you... the reason I took the, took it down was because it was being misinterpreted. So there's no point in it being up there just to stir up things. So I right. took it down. There was no point in it. So you, I mean, you apologize a lot, and you sort of said, look, I'm not, you know, I'm not aligned with the protesters, yeah. which which is true. But in terms of what they were. Out there doing, you know, obviously the, what they were trying to make a stand for, yeah. trying to have some kind of uh, self-determination. Uh, you know, do you do you sort of feel for their cause? I mean, did now when you've sort of been, you know, kind of looking back on it and looking back on that sort of situation, you, do you feel for it's, what they were it's doing? It's so much more complicated. Have you ever been to China? I've never been to okay. China. No. So I've been there a million. Like I said, it's not something for me to comment on. I'm I don't live there. So that is, that is, they have their whole system on how to deal with their things and to do what they do. So I have to leave it in their capable hands to handle it the way that they want to handle it from both sides. So it's easy to comment when you're sitting in the United States and we have a certain lifestyle and we live a certain way. It's easy to kind of look there. We have but, a certain expectation about what democracy means yeah, and feels but and looks but, like, but right? But we live in this country and that's our country and we should take care of our country. Other countries can do and should do what they feel is appropriate. Obviously, you don't want, uh, you know, people doing another holocaust or something like that obviously the world should get together and stop that kind of stuff but but uh, I, I, I really love the Chinese I love the Chinese people I love China I love Hong Kong and so I respect the fact that I need to not put myself the white guy from Seattle is going to tell them what to do uh, it's not going to make any sense I was really there just as an observer and was happy to to just kind of see it with my own eyes I had no idea that that picture that I took with a few of those people there was going to be used for their benefit and without, you know, they basically threw me under the bus and in a sense the people that took the picture and put it up on their site and said, hey, he's supporting and then people thought, oh, he's supporting and then that's when the government said, hey, be careful. Yeah. But I never did any of that so that's why I had to be um, a, a little bit maybe wordy with my tweets because it can only do 40 words. Or 140 four, characters. 140 yeah. characters, whatever it was. So I had to, I had to straighten it out because I, I didn't want to be misinterpreted. So there you go. Well, I guess it shows the power of social media as well. The power, the power of what of that it can or do. The, or the misuse of it. Interesting. Yeah. Well, you, I mean, you, I mean, it's, it, it's true. I guess I can see it from, I can see it from your perspective. Yeah. That if go to, you go there, to China for but... 25 times and then come back and we'll have a different conversation about it. All right. then. Because I've been there and I've talked to the Chinese people. I've been there. I've been in the street. I've been out in the provinces. I've been to, uh, you know, have you, ever, you know, there's, there's, there's cities like Chongqing, Wuhan, Shenzhen. 
I've been to all these places. So I've you been, see it from the Chinese point of view? No, I just see, I just, I just see the Chinese people, and I, lo I love them. I love the Chinese people. I love the Hong Kong people. I love them all. They, they, we have a love, we have a love fest. When I go there and play my music, I have a particular song called "Going Home." That's the song they love. "Going Home" is a song that's played every day in department stores all over China, uh, and it's the song that says, "Time to go home." So whenever I play my concerts, that's my finale, of course. Otherwise, of course. I look well, up and I and that's another Miles Davis show, you know. Otherwise, no, yeah, no audience. Th they'd be devastated. Otherwise, they're expecting that. So, yeah. uh, well, uh, I I want to ask you a few questions because we're doing a project here at the Huffington Post where we are collecting life lessons from fascinating people. And